Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept! Your stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. <laughs> for years I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculations, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavor. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What, you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Nah, my dude. Nah. <laughs> I'm just, uh, trapped in the last will and testament in case, uh, you know, one of these ingredients is, uh, poisonous. Got him? He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see that zinger Ashley... Ashley has prepared to follow up. But she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smell something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter to evil to sweet to innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. Well, she wants that D. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame. With cooking skills like this, she wants him all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. <laughs> Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in the pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of the bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. The fuck? Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in hand, you float weightlessly. Try and identify every flavor, save every moment. Everything that tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. This kind of feels like a commercial. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that you can't, that can only be described as love for a man. <laughs> for a flavor? Are they the same? I kind of want some chicken now. <laughs> Me too. This guy, like I said, this, this game's like hypnotizing us. I need a twenty dollar Phillip box. <laughs> oh, we could. <gasps> <laughs> After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. He smiles over so softly as you approach he stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence Colonel I wondered if I could talk to you for a second anything for a fellow chef what exactly was on that chicken <gasps> how bold to come out and ask it's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy 
for all times as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. <laughs> That's a semester. Apparently. He's clearly not going to give up, give it up easily. But it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone. And then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient. But you can't tell. I used... Motherfucker. It's something with great... My great-grandmother taught me. Can I touch something there? Yeah, it's teasing you. I use semen. Wow! <laughs> His great You'd grandma. never have gotten to get... That's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. I would have never thought of that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some of them if you searched. <laughs> While you're wrapped up in this huge revelation... You notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared while everyone else is still in the cafeteria. You decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figured out, you figured now is a perfect moment to show you your personality to him. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavor for complex, but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Big Daddy Grizz. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next sessions, the next lesson starts soon. You step into a massive cooking area where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place, it's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no. We have to show our stuff. <laughs> what if I totally blew it? You're not going to blow anything except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans. You're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson... We'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at me, but unable to control herself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel. Would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you. <laughs> if that wasn't clear. Is she trying to take him from you? You want to be my partner? No, this is me. I'm, oh, I'm taking him. Oh. Sure, Big Daddy Grizz. I'll prepare all sh our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Aww. Two different students quickly take notice. It, 
I didn't get a chance to pick. Oh, okay, you did. Yeah, it, it did it for me. <laughs> Pop. Hello, new partner. Clank. Beep, 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 bop. Hmm. Oh, my. Two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Pick the robot. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price to pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? I mean, a fucking robot that blinks, which is creepy as fuck. Or the kid will fuck her up. Yeah. The kid's a retard. Put a fucking door. <laughs> Don't burn her to death. It's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Look at his fucking teeth now. Right? It's fucking weird. Look at his face. He's smiling. Yep. Yeah. Tissue. I hardly know you. <laughs> Clink jitters. And a panel shakes loose. Shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on our own cooking classwork. Alright, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. <laughs> No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest for your partner, Colonel Sanders? Uh, steak tartare. Sounds easy enough. It's fancy. Uh, ooh. 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 Ah, okay, I see what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah. You're. Yeah. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes <gasps> and gravy. I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. He's gonna give you his gravy. Oh, baby gravy. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <sighs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does anyone have a crush? Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? You're damn right. I love his 11 herbs and spices. <laughs> We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business, bitch. Sanders' heart is my business. And you'd better keep your fingers off my man. Listen Did here, you fucking that? Tits McGee. Mm. Did someone call for me? Jesus. No, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Big Daddy Chris's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That's the deal, remember? Returns with arms full of pill potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Ban Ban. We are working on a quarter instead of a duet now. Are we working in a quarter? Quartet. There you go. Fucking words are hard. Actually, no. It looked like Big Daddy Grizz was struggling, so we offered to give 
give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I can also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day we might be able to get up to my level. You might be able to get up to my level. <laughs> Doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concord, concord, concoct. There you go. Concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Huh, what a bitch. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together. Like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes sense. But one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel, if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at your heart. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine. No vicar with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me, isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair arguments. From contracts to handshakes. I took on Big Daddy Grizz as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Damn right. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Big Daddy Grizz's natural talent. <laughs> or their loyalty. Oh. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their sh short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed and boi the boiling the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture. With plenty of butter and cream for flavor, it's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hands. You're holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat. Out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Mmm, potatoes. Right. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would have been proud. Steaming. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it. But he doesn't immediately let go. Ooh. The two of you stand holding the same spork. And for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure of this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Stay time, stand still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you. 
to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling a spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. <laughs> ben Ben, do something, do something. Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Big Daddy Grizz. We do not waste food in the Bromi cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I has potato face? God damn it. Ban Ban rushes back over. A covered dish in his hand. Okay. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. What is on? Fucking, yeah, an axe. <laughs> in just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Graze up a gaze upon my specialties. Braised tentacle of octopus. In my silky salt water sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupted student rushes to Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think that octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The result could be toxic. Too late, it has been eaten. I uh, think I left something on the stove. I don't feel so good. It killed him! Everyone, step back. Don't take another fight. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up by Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his obvious self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison. <laughs> the entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moment. Shock has frozen the whole crowd, but they're emotionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has indicated him against poison of all kinds. I'm not sure the professor... The professors here make enough money. <laughs> Ghost of student. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. <laughs> Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What? Like for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room.